In this module, I want to talk about units and unit conversions. Most physical quantities have units, and in fact, if you have the wrong unit, you can have the wrong answer. Uh, 30 inches does not equal uh, 30 kilometers and does not equal 30 uh, light years. So just having 30 doesn't mean you have the right answer. And so I guess that's the, the first lesson uh, concerning units, is that you should have them. Now, most of the work concerning units isn't the units themselves, as whether well, converting between different types of units. As far as unit con conversions concerned, there's sort of a straightforward procedure to follow. And that procedure involves, uh, first, a find equalities between units. Then, using those equalities, form ratios that equal 1. And then finally, multiply to convert. Converting units is really just a judicious multiplying your system by a judicious choice of the number one. You might be surprised exactly how many problems you can solve using that technique. All right, so let's start with a standard example. That being the definition between the English and metric system of measurements. The definition of the uh, English system of measurements of length is one inch is defined as 2.54 centimeters. This is an important relationship because this is the definition. You see I used the three bars here meaning defined as instead of just an equals. This is not an approximation or anything else. This is how the inch is defined and the rest of the English system of length is defined uh, from the inch. Uh, 12 inches is a foot. Well, let's get those. 12 inches equals 1 foot. 5,820 feet is equal to one mile, etc. Three feet is, is one yard, etc. And so this is how uh, the inch is defined. So if, well, it's just a quick example, if we have, say, uh, five inches, and I want to convert that to centimeter, the first thing I do is I, I take my ratio over here. Let's see, oh, where's my inch? 2.54 centimeters. And from that relationship, I uh, form a ratio by dividing each side by the unit I have. This gives me a number one equal to the ratio 2.54 five four centimeters over one inch and since this ratio is equal to the number one I can multiply this ratio by anything I want without changing the value so I can come up here and multiply five inches by two point five four centimeters over one inch inches cancel I multiply my numbers and I get 12.7 centimeters. Okay, well, that was pretty imp simple. So let's do a, a slightly more complicated problem. Let's say, for example, I'm uh, driving along uh, conveniently at a nice cruising speed of 85 miles per hour. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I, how fast am I traveling in, let's say, furlongs per fortnight? Now you might not know what a furlong is, but I happen to know that 660 meters is equal to one 
furlong, and that 14 days happens to be exactly one uh, fortnight. I don't know if FTNT is the proper uh, uh, abbreviation of fortnight, but let's go with it. So I need to be able to get miles per hour into something with meters and days to be able to then convert into furlongs and fortnights. And that's straightforward enough. 24 hours is equal to one day and 1.61 kilometers is equal to one mile. And then, of course, a thousand meters is equal to one kilometer. I want to take just a moment to point out that, see right here where I'm going between kilometers and miles, 1.61 kilometers is approximately equal to one mile. That's different than here, one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. If I wanted an exact relationship between kilometers and miles, I'd have to use the inch and centimeter and derive a new expression. But three significant figures is enough, and so we'll just keep 1.61 kilometers. All right, so now I, I can change each of these um, uh, relationships into ratios and multiply by my original expression. So I have here 1.61 kilometers per mile to be able to cancel the miles, and then 1,000 meters per kilometer to cancel the meters, and then one furlong is 660 meters to cancel the meters and I'll be left over with my furlongs. Alright, and now I need to change hours, 24 hours in a day. And see now my hours are on top to cancel my hours in the denominator and then 14 days in one fortnight. So now if I go through and let's cancel, make sure my units all cancel, miles are gone, kilometers are gone, uh, meters are gone, hours, hours, days, days, and I'm left over with furlongs and fortnight, and now I can just uh, go through and multiply all my numbers together, and if I do that, I get 69,700 furlongs per fortnight, and since all of these ratios are simply uh, equal to the number one, I'm uh, can confident that my result is the is the same value as the original, just in a different set of units. Okay, so that, that's not too bad. One thing where a lot of students run into problems then is when we have powers of units. If you have powers of units, then you need to be able, you need to multiply by the the ratio uh, the number of times that you have powers of units. And the easiest way to do this is with another example. Let's say we have a cord of wood. A cord of wood. You may or may not be aware that a cord of wood is a uh, rectangular cylinder that's four feet by four feet by eight feet. So the volume of the cord of wood, which is base times width times height, is then uh, four feet times four feet by eight feet, or 128 feet cubed. 
So I have three units of feet. So uh, what I, I, I want to ask the question, what is this in meters cubed? Question mark. Okay, so let's set this up. So I have 128 feet cubed. Now, I know my relationship between uh, inches and centimeters, so I want to go through centimeters and then to meters. So the first thing I want to do is convert feet into inches. So there's 12 inches in one foot. But the problem is, of course, this one foot does not cancel three feet. But that's okay. This is just the number one, and so I can multiply this by the number one three times. Another 12 inches by one foot, and then again by another 12 inches by one foot. And so these three units of feet multiplied together give me feet cubed, which cancel the feet cubed in the numerator. Okay, so these, and if I didn't want to write them all out, is equal to 12 cubed inches cubed over, well, 1 cubed feet cubed, which of course is the original conversion, 1 foot quantity cubed. So when I'm dealing with uh, powers of units, I need to multiply that term by powers of my ratios to be able to cancel the appropriate units. So now let's let's just do the whole the whole thing. If I have 128 feet cubed by 12 inches, 1 foot quantity cubed, there's 2.54 centimeters in 1 inch, that has to be cubed, and then 1 meter over 100 centimeters, that's cubed, and if I just, let's just go uh, 28 feet cubed, if I go through the whole thing, just to make sure I don't forget anything, this would be 12 cubed inches cubed over 1 cubed foot cubed, 2.54 cubed centimeters cubed, 1 cubed inch cubed, one, one cubed, <laughs> meters cubed, 100 cubed, centimeters cubed. And now I can make sure I can cancel everything. The feet cubed cancel, inches cancel, centimeters cancel, and I'm left with meters cubed. Then all I have to do is uh, multiply all the numbers, making sure I cube everything, and I get 3.62 meters cubed. Now, what happens if I didn't do this? If I had left off these and just used my single uh, conversion factors, I would have had uh, something like 39 meters cubed, which of course would have been completely wrong. What, what if I'd done that? What if I'd just forgotten? How would I have known that? Take a look for a minute at 39 meters cubed. Well, 27, that's certainly greater than 27 meters cubed, which is a cube 3 meters for every length. And 3 meters is greater than 3 feet, greater than 9 feet. So this is greater this volume is greater than a cube of nine feet on either side. Well, our original cord of wood, 
uh, where's our cord of wood, was 4 by 4 by 8. So there's no possible way this could be right. And that's one of the important things when you start doing these problems. When you get to the final answer, take a minute and see if that final answer makes sense. Is there some way you can check to see that that's the right scale to be able to solve the problem? And by doing that, you might be able to see that you made an error.